Welcome to Art with Diane My Happy. Today we will do training painting number three. This painting is an early morning mountain scene. You will learn how to paint fog and create atmospheric perspective. Also, you will create four different values of black, which will help each mountain range to recede into the distance. Finally, you will get to make evergreen trees, such as fir trees, and I will teach you the perfect brush strokes to master and achieve your tree shapes. In the previous lessons, you learned to paint palm trees and bare winter trees. Today, you will get to enjoy the evergreen. Well, get those supplies out and let's put some miles on our paintbrush. All right, I am so glad that I'm going to get to teach you to do this mountain scene today. Um, we're going to do it with different mountain ranges, but look at all the different values of black you get. Light, medium, dark, and very dark. And then right here, you see the moon, early morning moon, just a little bit better. But look, light, medium, dark, very dark. So that gives things a sense of depth and perspective, as you can see. So that's kind of what the lesson's about today. All right, get your ruler and your pencil and draw a border around the side. This helps your paper to lay flatter. And you can also buy, uh, depending on how much money you want to spend, and honestly, uh, the more expensive some of these art supplies are, absolutely, they're better quality. And they're easier to work with and you get better results. Um, but we're, I'm using to write on this one 140 pound paper. Um, a lot of times I do my demonstrations on 90 pound paper. And so after you get that done, the first thing I want you to do is draw your lower mountain range. Now this is not a hard sketch at all. I'm going to put a little one right here because that's where I want your pencil to go. All right, and go up and down. And now remember, we're doing a landscape. All right, there's your close-up range. All right, the second one I want you to do will be about middle ways. So I'm going to put a two over here at the side, just so you'll know. Secondly, put your pencil here. Go up into a mountain peak. Not in the middle of the paper, but a little bit to the left. It never looks right to peak a mountain in the dead center. All right, come on down, down, down. All right, the third line I want you to draw is in the center of the paper on this side. So I'll put a three here so you'll know the third thing to draw is put your pencil here and go up into a peak and then let it disappear behind this mountain. All right, now we want to have the moon visible because this is about... Um, 5.30 to 6.30 in the morning, uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway. So I'll put, um, now draw a circle. Draw it free-handed. If you're not good at that, get out a piece of paper and draw 200 circles. You'll be really good at it after that. All right, so now we're ready to do our sky. All right, so that's the first thing you're going to do. And if you're following my uh, YouTubes, you know that when you do a sky, you want to prime it. That means two layers of water. All right, I'm using my number one inch flat brush. All right, I'm putting my first layer on. And I'll check to make sure I don't miss any spots. Don't do the mountains. Stay out of the mountains. Just the sky. Don't do the moon. All right. Stay off the border. All right, I'm going to go around the moon. All 
All right, now I'm going to check. I don't see any dry spots. All right, I'm ready to go back and do my second layer. It's not really primed unless you have two layers of water. And even though we don't want to get it too wet, we certainly don't want to get it too dry. That's worse. Because then you'll start getting sharp edges all over it and your colors won't flow together and you want things to be soft, soft edges in your sky. I'm still putting my second layer of water on. You can work with your paper completely flat or you can tilt it a little bit like I'm doing, and I'm do, tilting it mainly so you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm looking across, make sure it's real shiny, and so I'm ready to start adding some blue. All right, got blue on my brush. Again, it kind of explodes with color and it starts getting soft edges. Now, if you want a gray blue, add a little touch of brown. See how that grayed the blue? Because you don't want a brilliant blue in every landscape you do. You want variety. Learn to do, use a lot of different paints. Alright, I'm going to get some more blue. And we can have some soft color. Now notice how it's not running down into the mountains. It's just following the water. See? It just follows the water. So that's why you want to keep your mountains dry. And keep your brush strokes pretty much going left and right. All right, I want a little bit of contrast with the moon. I don't want the moon really popping out um, like the focal point or anything. It's just one of those little hidden things you see. All right, I'm going to touch my paintbrush on a paper towel. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so it can suck up that little bead of water in here. You don't need to blot with your paper towel down on your paper. That's for disasters. We're not having a disaster moment right now. We're having fun, and this is looking good. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of red. And just warm up the sky a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit of red around the moon spread it out it just makes the moon pop just a little bit more so if I've got a little bit of red right there around the moon I certainly don't want that to be the only spot I have red in the sky that wouldn't make sense, so just put a little bit here and there. All right, so now when you get your sky done, I think that's pretty good right there. So when you get your sky done, then let it dry, or you can put a fan on it like I'm doing right now. Or the ideal thing would be to jump right over to another sheet of paper and do another one. And while you're doing that sky, this sky can be drying. And then you jump back and forth between two paintings, doing them in the same painting session. And that's what I'm talking about. When you get through, you'll have uh, twice as many paintings, and you'll be twice as good. And you'll get better twice as fast. All right, we're going to pretend that this is dry. All right, and Hannah might want to use that too on hers. So I'm, my it's still wet, but I have one that I did a few hours ago that we can continue to work. All right, this one's bone dry. Don't have to worry about it at all. So now I'm going to show you how to do the mountain ranges and get the different values because you want it to have four different values in the mountain ranges. It gets um, lighter looking as it goes back into the distance and that adds distance and perspective. All right, I'm gonna wash out my brush. Now this might surprise you, but one of the beginner ways to get fog, and there's different ways to get fog. I teach a different method in my advanced 
uh, painting class, but for a beginner, this is an excellent way to get fun. Prime all of your mountain ranges at the same time. And paint quickly. And if that phone rings or you get a text, don't check it. Stay focused. Prime away on your mountain ranges. Get right up to the pencil lines. All right, I can see my paper's getting shiny. All right, I'm looking across the side to see, make sure I don't leave out anything, any little shape but that's dry. Yep, it's wanting to dry right up there. All right, now I think everything's covered once. I'm ready to prime it again. Second layer of water's going on. And that's why you need a one inch flat brush because you can do it quicker. Um, I've seen artists have this tiny, tiny, tiny brush and they're trying to do a background with it or a big shape like we're doing now. All right, it's good. It's really nice and wet. I hope you can see that it's shiny. While it's wet, jump right over here to your black. Swoosh. Looks like I'm running it. But no, I'm just going to spread that light value of black need a little bit more. Remember, watercolor paint dries just a little bit lighter than you see it when it's wet. All right, put that light value on the, all the mountain ranges right now. You may be like, wow, this makes no sense. Well, just wait and see. It will, because it'll be foggy. All right. When you've got a light value on everything, all your mountains, then it's time to leave that mountain alone because it's done. Let's jump over here to your other ones. All right, this is where you're going to get the fog between the middle mountain range and the one in the distance. All right, but spread this out. So I'm using medium value of black right now. Put it everywhere. This is a wet on wet technique. And I'm getting some soft edges. Alright, so I've got my medium on everything but the back mountain. So this middle mountain is done. Now let's jump to the foreground. Alright, I'm putting a dark value. Not the darkest of all, but because our trees are going to be the darkest. So look how the mountains all of a sudden are looking like they go back into the distance. All right, so I have, right now I have light, medium, dark. It looks foggy like it would in the mountains early in the morning. And then I would suggest make sure it lay, will lay down flat when it dries. All right, so it's time for mine to start drying. All right, I'm gonna wash out my brush because I know I have black on there. And this won't take too long to dry, but I don't want to wait any longer. And so we're going to pretend again that it's dry. And I'm going to move this away. And I'm going to jump over here to one that I have prepared that's bone dry. And now I'm going to teach you how to do your winter evergreen trees. And oh, I love to make those. But you need uh, at, at least a number 10 round brush number 10 round brush all right i'm going to wet the tip get some black on it i'm going to start over here and i'm just going to draw a straight line doesn't have to be ruler straight but it needs to be about like that make it 
go up above this line right here. All right, now I'm going to flip left and right. Hope you can see that. All right, flip, 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 flip. Go down the line to get your evergreen tree shapes. Now, these trees are silhouetted because it's still dark in the valley. The sky's beginning to lighten a little bit because of the early morning. All right. So I've got that one. All right, I'm going to wet the tip. No need to rinse out the brush. And I'm going to do another tree. I'll do this one maybe a little taller. Just a little taller. Don't make it too tall and cover up all of your sky. Just a straight line. Flip to the left. Flip to the right. Notice how it looks sort of like an arrow. All right. Flip, flip. I'm using the point. My brush is loaded with water. Now, if your brush is sticky and it's not moving, then it may mean that you don't have enough water on your brush. All right. I'm going to wet the tip. I'm going to do another tree. This one's going to be... Now, these two are right here, so I don't want to put one right where that peak is, but I'll put one right here. That's a good place. Flip, 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 flip. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You'll get really good at this and really fast. If your brush starts drying out, yeah, wet your tip. Some people go right to their paint, but wet your tip. You want it to flow like ink. You can go back and add some darker values. All right, I'm going to just put another tree or two. I'm going to put a little tiny one now right here. You want variety. That's one of the principal and elements of design, especially in nature. You see lots of variety. I'm going to add some uh, kudzu and... Poison ivy. No, we'll just call it, we'll say could see. All right, whatever may be the out there. Just add some brush. All right, I'm going to wet the tip. Get some black. I'm going to do one more tree because then I think you'll have an idea. Straight line. All right, left, right, left, right. Don't put any trees right under these peaks. That never looks right in a painting. If you're out painting on location and the tree is under a peak of a mountain, uh, either move somewhere else or either uh, leave that tree out. You're the artist. All right, let's check our values. Light, medium, Dark, very dark. I've got four different values. All right, good. And I see Hannah's got light, medium, dark, and now she's getting ready to add her trees. Well, I hope you learned a lot today by doing the mountain scene. And it taught you about contrast, wet on wet again, getting different values. I could actually do a lot more values than uh, that. I could just have have mountains getting lighter and lighter and lighter as they go back and have many ranges. So get that paintbrush out and practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time on Art with Diane Mahaffey. Thank you for watching.